Welcome everyone to a casted game for Age of Empires 4 and today sporting in the northeast corner of the map playing in red we've got Valdemar playing as the English and battling it out against Valdemar today in the southwest in blue we've got Avery fan also known as Baltune hailing in from Sweden playing as the Abbasid dynasty welcome everyone to Gorge hope you guys are having a great morning good afternoon or good evening as always of course depending where you are in the world and we're going to be in for some cracking Age of Empires 4 action. And I'm, I, well, I'm 100% sure about it because if it wasn't a great game, it would not be making it onto YouTube. So strap yourselves in, brace yourselves for a banger of a game. And we're on Gorge once again. I mean, it's a map that actually we've been featuring quite a lot on the channel recently. And it's not sort of I've been selecting the maps or such. It's just the fact that the games on this map have been pretty amazing. But what's going to be kind of cool is to see this matchup. The English versus the Abbasid Dynasty. Now you do have a bit of a tug of war effect on this map regardless of the civilizations involved. And the English certainly play to that style. Especially if they go for sort of an early aggression. Feudal Age push with longbows and the Council Hall. Of course we have to wait and see what Valdemar is being... You know, what he's been cooking and what he's planning to cook for us today on Gorge. House of Wisdom, as always, the upgrade building, the, well, the building that essentially gets you to the next stage, regardless of which one you're going to go for. Four different wings, you've got the economic wing, you've got the military wing, you've got the culture wing, and last but not least, unlikely to see it today, the trade wing. Now, the English do actually have a couple of options, you know, they could go for the Abbey of Kings, get the king out nice and early, potentially Council Hall. I guess it all comes down to how aggressive Valdemar wants to play as the English. I feel like the English are actually a really good spot in terms of versatility. They've got the one town centre play, but certainly they can opt for second town centres into Fast Castle, White Tower, play sort of the late game that way. But the Abbasid Dynasty are no slouches when it comes to the late game. So um, yeah, in fact, Valdemar is going to opt for a Council Hall. I was actually going to go for a very quick uptime here. So probably going to get to the next stage at about four minutes, going up to the next stage with four villagers. And, uh, yeah, he's going to get those longbows, longbows out quick time. And bear in mind, in this particular build order, the way it's panning out, uh, it looks like he's going to get a, uh, a barracks nice and early as well for some spearmen, most likely. But we shall see. I'm kind of curious to see, actually. It's going to be the economic wing for Baltune. And uh, we typically see them actually open up with the military wing, but this is kind of interesting because you've got the English that could look to be aggressive, and if they are being aggressive, you know, you're, you're foregoing a lot by going for the eco wing here. The Eco Wing Short will give you Fertile Crescent, which is a very nice upgrade, of course, reducing the cost of economic buildings by 35% and houses as it is. So possibly going to be a second town centre here. In fact, it will be because he's going over to Stone. So it's definitely going to be an issue of Baltoon being defensive and making sure he gets the second town centre, villages out nice and early, scale that economy, and then hopefully be able to hold on against what is looking to be a very aggressive English playstyle. Look at this. There's the barracks nice and early. To add in some spearmen. Now I would like to say by the way a very big thank you for everyone who's been supporting the channel whether it be on Twitch or YouTube guys absolute legends thank you thank you thank you. Big shout out of course to the YouTube channel members and the Twitch subscribers going the extra mile and also the uh, the super thankers on YouTube thank you so much. I had a couple coming in uh, recently and I really appreciate that support. Now with the economic wing coming on in it's something that we haven't seen in a long time actually for the Abbasids. But what's kind of cool is that you know, the Abbasids, they do have some great archers that scale quite nicely into the mid to late game. A lot of the times, ranged units like the archers don't typically scale particularly well. But the Abbasids and the English are kind of two civilizations that do it pretty well. And the reason for it for the Abbasids is that they do go for the military wing and the castle age. They've got boot camp and they've got composite bows, which increases the attack speed by 33% of those archers. Boot camp increasing the health of the infantry, all infantry as it is, by 15%. But he's got to get there. That's the big thing. We talk about Castle Age, but that's a long, long way away. And we see the first longbow, the first spearman moving across, and second longbowman chasing on afterwards. And he's got the stone he needs for a second town centre here now, Baltoon. Question is, where does he place it? He's probably going to have to place it quite close to home. I suspect probably to protect the gold, right? Because you really want that gold to be eventually you know, being able to get to the Castle Age. I, I kind of wonder if he's going to get there without suffering too lot many losses. And to be fair, actually, that would be very rangeable. That gold position for the longbows. In fact, speaking of which, Baltoon, he reacts quick enough to pull the villagers out of there. But you can see a constant stream of longbows, and this is one of the beauty things of Gorge. There's a map. 
you actually can just go straight across the middle and uh, get a really good timing on these units across the map. It's a very optimized build order here from Valdemar, no doubt about it. There he is, venturing over to uh, gold. I suspect probably for some upgrades, considering the timings here, I'm sure, you know, Baltian is aware that uh, Valdemar is looking to be pretty aggressive. And with the map control, Valdemar could potentially look to get the deer camp and, and boars, but it's not something that they necessarily need to do. They do like to get those English farms. They are cheaper, but on a rush like this and the kind of pressure that you have like this, you know, being able to get the deer camp for free in terms of not getting you know, any wood cost to it, apart from mill, is uh, really powerful, actually. Even though the English farms are cheaper, it is still a farming transition that halts the progression of a push quite significantly. I mean, we're not going to see that for a while, though, because there's a decent number of sheep there for Valdemar. Now he's going to get the uh, the fresh food stuffs upgrade, going to reduce the cost of those villagers, which is fantastic to help supply the uh, the Abbasid army with enough resources to produce army. And there's the first production building. It will be an archery range. Now, what's pretty cool about this matchup as well, with the units being on show, the archers versus the longbowmen, that's definitely something we have to talk about. Now, the longbow have extra range, they cost a bit more resources, but the archers themselves have a faster movement speed, and don't underestimate the significance of that. It really contributes to the push and pull dynamic of this matchup, in the sense that if the longbows overshoot a little bit, as in they kind of go a bit too aggressive, get out of position, the archers can chase them down. And, you know, the longbows, they can't really retreat too easily because of the fact that they're slower, Having said that, the longbows do get the first hit often because they've got the larger range. If the longbows are used perfectly, what they can be used to do is to just kite the uh, the archers and try and get the first few hits for free. But the archers can eventually chase them down. So it really comes down to who wants to commit to a fight, how much, and, and the timing of it and the decision making on the unit numbers. Now, curiously, Valdemar just chilling out here on the right side with his longbows. Possibly could try and snipe out archers when they pop out. A good number of archers here just to deny the outpost. He's trying to extend the network of castles bonus here, the English. Understandably so, because the network of castles is incredibly strong. Giving them an additional 20% attack speed on these uh, on these longbows. And if he can establish that, and I think he probably will do. He'd lost the villager it seems, but I suspect he's going to be sending another one here, Valdemar, before too long. The villagers have to back away from gold. That gold is not safe at all. They might eventually want to get some outposts there, but I don't think, you know, the castle age is not really in the mind for Baltune at the moment, I wouldn't have thought. You know, he got enough gold for fresh food stuffs, and then he called it a day. And there is that villager coming out to build that outpost. Now, still relying on the sheep for now, and he will be placing those farms. It does make it a lot easier. Saves himself from being raided later on in the game if we get that far. But it does mean that the um, you know, the units that he has now, Valdemar, that's going to have to be... I mean, he's going to keep on pumping, of course, but... Their farming transition will slow things down a tad bit. Not a lot, because he does have a lot of villages now, of course. Speaking of villages, Baltoon has 10 extra. Care to see that second town center. And Baltoon just needs to delay the game as much as possible here, really. There's the blacksmith. We've already got steel arrow from these longbows, so he's going to be doing extra damage. Very nice indeed. Got the six ranged attack. Seven tiles of range. And the archers for the Abbasids. We've got five range attack and only five tiles range. Of course, the two tiles, the extra tile is because of steeled arrow. Oh, actually, he's not got steeled arrow just yet. Okay, there's actually an extra two range on it. It is in now, though. He gets a couple of shots off and... The, uh, I guess in a way, a concern for the Abbasids is going to need some farming real estate. Not much space on the map for him, really, to extend that farming transition. But he's starting to run out of food. Not many sheep underneath the town centre anymore. And he dare not venture out, right? He will not want to go on the map. 
And if he gets caught, there'll be dead villagers for sure. But curiously enough, Beltine actually opted for Iron Undermesh first. And here begins the farming transition. Continuously pumping out these units, actually adding in the Man at Arms upgrade, which I quite like to see. Of course, the English, one of two civilizations. Well, I should say three, actually, now with the Order of the Dragon, but... I guess one of three civilizations that can get Man at Arms in the Feudal Age. Oh, that one's floating in the air. Uh, uh, well, he's walking funny, isn't he? But the reason why it's such a big consideration is because, actually, when you think about infantry fights with archer masses like this... You know, Baldune, if he does focus fire on the uh, the Man at Arms, they'll soak up a bit of damage. Allowing the Longbows to do their thing. Especially with now a network of castles. Could be dangerous. But Valdemar has to time it well, right? He won't want to dive. This can't really. Not only two town centers being placed so conservatively and so... Uh, uh, so close together. Now bear in mind, he doesn't actually have to get siege engineering in order to make a ram if he does want to take out the outpost. One potential way out here for Beltune is to try and negate this network of castles. Make no mistake about it, it is a very big factor. The extra 20% attack speed is a huge deal. Can be a game changer. Can be a fight changer, that's for sure. Now considering he did go for the eco wing in the feudal age, fully expect him to go to the castle age with the military wing. The question is, will we see a castle age in this match? Because a lot of aggression in terms of what Valdemar is trying to achieve, but a map like Gorge is actually very tricky, tricky to do damage, and it comes down to the fact that the wood line is relatively safe and secure, and especially now with two town centers very close to each other, difficult to do damage. But the archer range is a little bit further forward, so I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Valdemar just camps a couple of longbows here, try and get some damage in to those archers as they pop out, but he... Continues to cycle through, and the archer's going to start focusing on the belt on this uh, these outposts for Beltune. It might not even need a ram in the end. He's going to go for the berries in the north. A bit risky, but actually the longbow there nicely spotted there, Valdemar. I wouldn't be surprised to see him try and drop an outpost. He might just run away with the villagers. He doesn't have wheelbarrow. He's going to run away with the villagers. Just one longbowman though, so he won't suffer too much. Although that might change. Now Valdemar's going to stick around there for now. Sending his archers. Now, of course, he doesn't necessarily know how many is there. He can recognize that there isn't too many. So he's sending his archers now to defend. And Valdemar, he's going to oblige. He's going to go further forward as well. He's got a couple of man and arms mixed in. Could be the first engagement in the match. Obviously, been relatively quiet despite the number of units on the field so far. Valdemar now going for the main base, trying to pick off reinforcements. Potentially does get a couple of shots off. And this is what we talked about. Really utilizing the range. Picks off a villager as well. Good start to the engagement. But... There comes a point where maybe Valtine feels confident about his numbers and starts to push on through. Golden Age Tier 2 now already in for the Bassids. Given the research speeds increased by 15% and the village gather rate was obviously there initially for the first tier. The engagement comes in. I mean, Valdemar is going to be careful because it's a lot of long, that's a lot of archers, but I think, you know, Valtine is a bit cautious with the, the amount of times that are mixed in with there. I felt like maybe Baldoon could have taken that fight, but maybe the Man Toms just uh, perturbed him a little bit. He does indeed make another outpost for the network of castles. He continues to get those farms. Plenty of them. But the big concern for Valdemar, really, is the fact that the village account is always climbing here for Baldoon. So as time goes on, the economy is just straight up better. He might take the fight now. He's going to rush on down. Network of Castles is in play, but that's a decent number of man at arms tanking that front line. A couple of spearmen as well from the early game. And this is the thing. Look at that, how much man at arms are tanking. Now, he, he splits off the group of the archers, gets one group to focus on longbows, the others to stay to focus on the man at arms. He's going to pull away here. He's going to pull back. Baltoon doesn't want to engage the longbows as much as possible. He wants to take down the man at arms. He might push back though. I don't know if Valdemar quite has enough here. That's a lot of archers here from Baltoon. He's moving further forward now. He's going to snipe a couple. At the very, now, bear in mind, of course, the archers are faster uh, movement speed, so they can decide to take the fight if they want to. There's no real way for Valdemar to get out of there. Now, he can't one-shot these man just yet, and there are two of them, so he decides to head bomb back and can take down the outpost. He does want to engage whilst Network of Castles is in play. is down now, so Valdemar will need to send another villager if he wants to uh, establish another outpost. But I guess in this scenario, Baltune really doesn't necessarily have to win the fight. He just has to trade well and buy himself some time. He might lose the round, but it's just not coming up to repair, so he does lose it in the end. 
Meanwhile, Baltus' economy is looking really solid. It's moving further forward now, especially with that network of castles. But uh, these man arms are pretty tanky. He's going to try and focus on the long bows first. And he's doing just that focus firing and picking off a decent number of them. Yeah, you can definitely see the focus fire there. From both players, as it happens, Baltoon chasing it down. And he should be able to take a decisive fight. But guess what? Valtimar is coming with reinforcements. The question is, are they coming in quick enough? I'm not so sure they are. It looks like now he is attack moving. And he, you know, he's, he's going to try and extract as much value. But he eventually has to back away. Man at arms did a lot of damage. Valdemar is able to push him again. But again, this suits Baltoon. The longer the game goes on, the stronger economy he's going to have. That's something that Valdemar has got to be acutely aware of. It looks like with a bit of gold coming on in, maybe Baltoon is considering the Castle Age. Doesn't quite have enough of the Castle Age, just need a little bit more trickle. And then he'll have enough. He's going to have to contend with a couple of rams now. Two being built on the field. But i, I got to say, Baltoon is taking some really good trades and is in a really good spot. He might potentially take the fight. Goes on line formation. Both players do, in, incidentally. Cancels the ram. Doesn't continue building one of them, at least. Uh, but here comes another batch of man at arms, soaking up a lot of those arrows. But Baltoon is splitting the army again into two. Trying to focus on as many longers as possible. He's going to back away. Now, it's kind of curious to think about how many archers do you need to one-shot a longbowman? with these upgrades. That's such a kind of an important thing if you play Age of Empires 4 because I wouldn't be surprised if Baltoon actually selected the number of archers it takes to one-shot a longbowman to use those to fight the longbowman and the rest of them to focus on the man-at-arms. That would be a really clutch way to micro this. That's lost one or two more villagers, loses another and a third. So four in total now of Adamar's picked off and constant streaming of red units across the map. Yeah, looks like Baltoon is thinking about the Castle Age. Valdemar, not so much. And of course, it's got to be the military wing, right? For the, the Abbasids. Can't think of anything else happening here. To get to the next stage, just needs a bit more gold. He's going for the gold around the back. And I love this play, by the way, because keeping it hidden is important, right? Because Valdemar can see this on occasion. And if he sees that there's a lot of gold being mined here, he could expect the Castle Age. But with the gold being mined here on the west side... You know, Valdemar doesn't know about this, so he won't have necessarily an idea that there is a castle edge coming in now for Baltoon. And it will be the miniature wings. He's actually going to go around the right side and bypass this a little bit. Maybe cut off for some reinforcements, pick off some units. He's doing just that. Of course, the great movement speed of these archers compared to the longbow counterpart. Really making it work. Splitting the army into two here, Baltoon. And I love this play because what it's doing is more of a distraction, really. This could be not necessarily a throwaway army, but what it's doing is forcing Valdemar back and... We talk about it plenty of times of casting Age of Empires 4. There's a couple of principles you have to bear in mind when you age up. Number one, do you have a large standing army to you know fight off a push in? Number two, do you know where your enemy is? Number three, do you have the ability to keep them away from you? And uh, we're going to lose a couple of archers here though. Now of course, factor number three, that's what Baltine's working on here now, forcing Valdemar back and he knows where his army is, so... He is trying to buy as much time as possible to allow him to get to the Castle Age safely. Because bear in mind, once Baltoon does get to the next stage, Valdemar might decide to push in. But the trouble is, by the time he sees the notification that Baltoon is in the Castle Age, Valdemar is not knocking on his door anymore. He's way, way back on his side of the map. Of course, driven by the fact that he uh, Baltoon moved these archers across. Now, he will lose a lot of these, considering those horsemen on the field, but... We talked about the um, the scalability of units. And whilst the archers do have, you know, composite bows and boot camp, it wouldn't be too untoward to see maybe Baltoon opt for lancers. Because, of course, there's no real answer to lancers for Valdemar at this stage when he's in the feudal age. There's no spearmen. And, of course, he can't make crossbowmen until the castle age. So I think lancers could be a nice play. The question, does he have stables here, Baltoon? In fact, he's going to go for a manger... Uh, well, I was going to say manger, but that's actually for the abbasids. He's going to go for a Manganel or two. It does have three stables, so he indeed is certainly going to go for some cavalry units. And this is what we talked about. Look at this. Valdemar making, uh, taking no risks. Taking his back away for now, but he did think about diving on in because he felt like he could do some damage, right? When you age up, that's when you're most vulnerable. And Baltoon made it so that Valdemar didn't go straight away, or at least by the time he saw the notification, took a bit of time to get into the base. Because that, wasn't able to do too much damage. Too much damage. 
and is able to buy the time to get a mangonel out. And Valdemar, he doesn't want any of it. He doesn't want to engage with that. Not with the mangonel on play. And so now that Baldoon has got to the castle age, Valdemar obviously knows about it. There's no need to keep anything secret. So he does opt for the gold back at home just to be a bit safer. Because uh, there's no need to hide the fact that he's mining gold anymore now that he's in the castle age. A couple of villagers in the deer camp and it's not guarded. This could be a really good pick off here. I love Valdemar's choice to go around the back. A bit of a counter raid here for uh, Baldoon. And he's going to get some serious damage here. There's no units to protect and he's going to get... Couple of shots off, charges off with the Lancers. Pretty tanky unit, of course, Castle Age units. This could be disastrous for Valdemar. He's lost a lot of villagers already, more on counting, but oh no, he didn't actually go around the corner. He's gonna go for the villagers there. Double mask, looking to get those Imams out here. Valtoon to pick up those relics now that he can. Lancers charging on through. Now they eventually they will go down, of course. Things town centers are incredibly strong and, and you know, pepper those arrows. He does have an iron undermesh here, Baltoon. Yeah, we'll lose those villagers, a couple of them at least. But now with camel riders involved and lancers, this is looking a bit dicey. Baltoon is getting more villager kills and Valdemar having to pull the army back. And that's exactly what Baltoon would want. Because now in the castle age, he can look to focus on those relics. A great kind of game so far. Lots to talk about in terms of strategies. A really nice game to break down, actually, as it happens. I'm sure a lot of you guys play English out there, so it could be quite useful to uh, to note how things are panning out. There's a longboat. Now, you could potentially use the village just to fight that. It is one longboatman, after all. Decides to run away with it. Two lancers against a horseman. There is only one winner there. And Valdemar sticking it out in the feudal age. Now, bear in mind, if he wants to age up, which it looks like he will... He's got 13 villages on gold. He needs to make sure the same principles. Does he have a standing army to defend with? Does he know where his enemy's army is? Is there a way for him to push his enemy's army back? That's probably a negative on the last two, but he definitely does need to have a standing army. Because I wouldn't be surprised if Baltoon does decide to push in quite heavily if he sees any sort of attempt to get to the castle stage, which I probably think he, he sees now, because I'm sure he sees the villages on gold, right? Single longbowman harassing around the back. Might lose a couple of cavalry. Of course, longbows, despite being few late units, he's got a large mass of them, so still doing a decent amount of damage. Does have steel arrow after all. And Aldemar kind of needs castle age before too long because yeah, these are veteran archers. They scaled very nicely. He's got a mangonel or two as well. Got a huge village lead, and he's looking in a good spot. With Aldemar, it looks like he just uncued a whole bunch of units being produced, and he will be looking to go to the castle age. Bear in mind, if you go, yeah, he's going to go for the white tower and the gold. I love this play. He needs to secure the gold source. There's one thing getting to the castle age. There's another thing being able to do something with it. And to be able to do anything in the castle age, you really do need that gold income. And the white tower will help him secure it. Got plenty of stables as well. Potentially looking to get knights. That's always an option for him. A couple of horsemen looking to get a um, couple of reinforcements. Lancers are going to engage. Yeah, this could be dangerous. Baltoon moving forward with two mangonels. There is the age up, though. Comes in the nick of time, and that white tower is going to be very helpful for defending. We might try and take out a production building or two, or maybe just head on back, because it can't really pressurize this location with the white tower being there. At least not without rams, not without siege. Just holding on around the entrance of the base for now. Valdemar, he's just waiting for the veterancy upgrades, right? He kind of needs to. He needs to make sure he gets the veterancy in. And here are a couple of rams about to push on through here. Try and do some damage. Get some structures down if he can. It's going to be important, actually, because there's one thing pushing into your enemy's base with units. There's another thing getting siege to take out structures. Going around the back. Try to get a bit of raid on the wood line, but Valdemar... He notices the danger, has walled up a little bit, and potentially will have access to this 8,000 tile gold vein, which is going to start to become pretty significant as things go on. Look at this. It's going to be the culture wing coming out here for Valtoon. Bear in mind, he doesn't actually have boot camp or composite bows, but he will be going to the Imperial Age, which is pretty huge. This timing, I mean, I mean ultimately, he's making real good use of the village account. And the thing is now, if he gets to the Imperial Age, well, he will get to the Imperial Age. What does Valdemar do from here? 
He has to go for some sort of all-in play because there's no way that Valdemar can get to the Imperial Age. If he tries to commit to that, he just won't be able to produce army and he will be dead. The economy won't sustain Valdemar to get to the Imperial Age. So I think he's got to push. He's got to push now. does have a Springle to try and counteract the Mangonels on the field, but there are two of them and there's even a Springle there for the Abbasids. Now, forward keep in a strong position over a, a massive stone vein, so I suspect those villages go back onto stone to get another keep, maybe. Either way, Baltoon is certainly in the driver's seat in this one. Will Valdemar have something up his sleeve? He's got to find a way to do some significant damage. The only other option is to get a landmark snipe, but it doesn't feel likely. Now, with Culturing about to come on in, these will become elite archers. Now, he still doesn't actually have boot camp or composite bows as it happens. Maybe he's forgotten about it. I'm not too sure. I usually would typically expect to see those upgrades coming on in. Valdemar is pushing on in. He senses a problem, right? He notices that Baljun hasn't been aggressive, hasn't moved in with his army. There's going to only be one reason. Maybe because he's looking to upgrade them. And he'd be right here, Valdemar. He's counted it. I mean, a second there away from the Imperial Age. There it is. But here comes Baltune coming back with those Mangonels. Does have one spring order. He needs to take the engagement here, potentially, Valdemar. He needs to try and snap out the Mangonels first, though, because if they get some good shots on the Longbows, it could be devastating. He might try and focus fire them with the Longbows. We shall see. He's focusing on the spring order first. He does dodge with those Longbows first. Shot doesn't quite land for the Mangonels. Village is coming out to repair. One spring order involved. And he's going to repair the spring order as well. Using the villages like that is such a clutch play by Baltune. There's no village there to repair for Valdemar on the other hand. He snaps out the uh, the spring order. Nice play there by the longbows. Here comes the Mangonel shot on the Man at Arms. Gets a huge amount of damage, but the Man at Arms are pretty tanky. He loses one Mangonel, about to lose a second. Villages come out to repair. It does get the shot off, but doesn't land as much as it would have wanted to. But the villagers repairing this Mangonel so well, so low in health. Spring does take it down in the end. Gets one more Mangonel shot. Wasn't a huge one. Valdemar taking this fight, but... It, there's just so many units and these longbows shouldn't focus on the villagers. They need to focus on the army, really. He might clear this up, Valdemar. He's got 86 military units after all. He's got the sheer numbers. got spearmen involved as well. Clutch player to get those. Takes out a lot of the cavalry. And is Valdemar doing this? He's actually managed to kill a lot of army and now he's starting to focus fire on the villagers. This is potentially a comeback mechanic here for Valdemar. No doubt about it. The Imperial Age was... Uh, an interesting move here for Baltoon. Could have worked for him. He does have elite archers, but just the sheer numbers. You know, the man-at-arms, even Castle Age man-at-arms, could do pretty well here. He's pushing on in. But granted, the economy is still looking very strong. He's got 92 military units here, though, Valdemar. So, the game is certainly not over. Not by a long shot. Now, the man-at-arms will chase down the elite archers. Not many units remain here for Baltoon, really. 18, as it happens. It's going to start making those rams. All right, I think Valdemar's in a really good spot, actually, as it happens, because he could probably finish this out in the castle ages. He just needs to take out infrastructure, take down the production buildings, and even if Baltune does have resources, he can't make... I mean, he'd have to replace his buildings, right? And there's got to be rams. He's got to make plenty of rams here, Valdemar, if he can. It's a bit of a tight one because he's spending everything he's got and he does want to keep making armies well. He doesn't want to, you know, fall into the trap of not making more army. Oh, this could be devastating. A lot of villages are going to go down. He has to cancel the keep, surely. He does cancel it, but he's continuing to lose more villagers and he's still ahead as it happens. You know, having that second town set so early has really paid dividends. Three rams coming on through. He's going to get a fourth as well. But he's desperate to get that keep up. Longbow should focus on this. Oh, but there's two Mangonels. Could be devastating here, Valdemar. He's going to get a couple of shots off. A decent shot with these Mangonels. Two Springles as well. It's all about Siege at this point. And I don't know. Valdemar might not have this. He's going to try and force down this keep. Baltoon should get up. He loses the uh, Springle there, Valdemar. Looking a bit dicey. He's no real way to take out the Mangonels. And that feels like that's what it's all coming down to, right? The Rams starting to be focused fired by the Springles and the Mangonels as it happens. And he might lose those before too long has enough wood for maybe a couple more but this is where it becomes really tough right because the house of wisdom actually has torch damage uh resistance there we go look at that in the influence all the buildings within the influence of the house of wisdom gains five plus fire armor now bear in mind man at arms has 16 torch damage so 11 damage will be coming in per shot wait what's going on 
Mangonel's getting a good shot, but look at the mini-map. There's plenty of red units coming across the map. Those must be villagers. Going to snap out the Mangonels first, maybe. Villagers coming out to repair. And he should be able to hold on. I don't think there's enough mana times. He might snap out one. No, but Baltoon is, is microing it really well. He keeps the Mangonels alive. He's surely, surely going to get lots of shots on longbows. But here come the villagers. Mass migration of those English villagers across the map. Going to try and get the torches out to take down the House of Wisdom. But I don't know if he has enough here. There's just not enough army. And the Mangonels are still alive. Well, one of them is at least. Massive shot on the longbows. To be fair, it could have been a lot more, but this is the problem. There's lances. There's no spearmen here, really. The village is trying to torch us down. The village is coming out to repair. He just needs to keep both of these landmarks alive, or at least one of them, and hold on. And looks like he might just. Valdemar, he sent absolutely everything. The question is, will he have enough? Here comes another Mangadal. There's no way to deal with the siege. That's the big problem here for Valdemar. Longbow is still getting some value, and the villagers that are repairing can't be sniped by the longbows because you have to take care of those lances first. But now those lances have gone. Here are two Manganels, though. This could be devastating. They might go on the villagers. He's going to go for the longbows first. The villagers coming out. Wait, the repairs are up. There's no way he does this, Valdemar. From a really good position, he may have just thrown it all away. And the villagers repaired the House of Wisdom hugely. And now, don't forget, the Imperial Age has got a lot of HP on it. A devastating map. Trying to keep the town center alive as much as possibly can. But there's so many villagers trying to torch us down. Manganel takes out the ram. And the biggest problem here is that there's no units really for Valdemar. There's no units for uh, Baltian either. Apart from those Mangadals with the massive shot and those villagers can't risk it anymore. But it's coming out to repair. It's still on fire, but the town center, it remains. And he does have so much wood to repair with as well if he needs to. Man Mangadals pushing forward. Gonna get rid of some of the longbows. The villagers still torching down. Valdemar has not given up, but it feels a rough ask now with the two Mangadals. There it is, Benjamin. GG gets called. Valdemar taps out. He threw it all away. He brought everything with him, all the villagers, but it was not enough. And the fire torch damage resistance for the House of Wisdom for the Abbasid Dynasty season through. What a cracking game of Age of Empires 4. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. More importantly, subscribe to the channel for plenty more Age of Empires 4 action. Take care and see you next time.